Okay then, so pretty much all the bits with the, uh, with the standard are sorted now. Got better windscreen wipers, uh, the suspension rides nice now. Everything's done. So it's on to the paintwork. So first up, the worst part of this car was the roof and uh, all of the paint cracked and started to lift on the roof. I've literally never seen anything like it. Um, as you can see, you know, these bits were just, uh, just flaking away. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take all of the paint off the roof, get it back to bare metal and then paint it up from there. But first off, there's a lot of scraping to be done. Genuine hard work, scraping that chisel, nightmare. Anyway, um, we've got it down to this grey area, which is the original paint, and this red, which is some paint that had been painted over the original paint. But now, this is thin enough. We've got the bulk of the paint off that we'll be able to angle grind this all up to bright steel tomorrow, um, ready for some etch primer. Okay then, so what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be uh, grinding with sanding discs. We're going to be sanding all of this old paint right back to the br uh, bright metal. It's going to get dusty. Okay then, so we have removed all of the paint from the roof. Um, now what you might notice here is these black spots. Now, those black spots are some sort of rust or corrosion. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over it uh, with some sort of rust proofer first and then we'll get some etch primer on it. And the rust proof I'm going to use is this stuff called Victan. It's good paint on with a brush because we'll be going over this with a few layers of primer so the brush marks won't really matter. So, here we go. Uh, the roof, um, this stuff's dry now, this sort of anti-rust primer. And what we're going to do is start looking at, what we're going to do, it's a technique called snow ploughing that was very popular in the uh, 60s. And it's where we mould this um, rain gutter into the roof to make a gentle sort of a curve up. Uh, so the rain still comes off and drips, you know, drip down onto the body. Uh, but it don't just, you know, run down here anymore. But it gives a lot cleaner look because inside a rain gutter is always a bit rough because that's where the um, roof of the car is welded to the frame of the car so in there is never that nice uh, so if we do that then it will all be shiny all be smooth and with no rough edges so let's get to it So I'm going to make some fill up and what we're going to do, that has all been cleaned out, ground down, sanded and it's got the rust protection just in case and what we're going to do is fill it all with fill up and I'm going to use the bow in the spreader to form the curve down in the roof.
Okay, so there we go. Um, I just put it in rough, just get it in, you know, and then just, you've got a smooth, you've got smooth edge in, you've obviously got the smooth edge of the roof, and just whoosh, along in one motion, and you get this, and it, it really does, it really tidies the roof of a car up. Um, just makes it look a lot nicer, so, sort of moulded together. And also this is, this is a full on custom touch. The, uh, you know, the term snow ploughing that goes back to George Barris. It's not something I've made up. And uh, this is how it's done. Now they probably did it with lead, which I can only imagine would take hours and hours and hours. But uh, there you go. There it is. This will be part of the finished roof and it's going to look great. Uh, we've been doing some uh, fiberglass in and we've been doing some filling. So across, uh, we've cleaned all this off the roof and between the um, sun visor and the roof uh, there'd, been, there'd been some cracking so I've run a piece of uh, coarse strand mat right the way from the roof right over up to the solid part of the visor, covered all this and then just like I shown yesterday which was yesterday for me, or probably earlier on in this episode for you, um, how we snow ploughed these uh, rain gutters in. We've also done that across the roof here. So the roof's just got this nice, and then it's into there. You know, so just a really nice shape. Um, here's all the gutters. It's a little bit of fill in there. I've got a low spot there. I think there was a dent in the gutter, and there's a dent in the roof just there. I always feel, um, Keep your hand flat, you can always feel stuff like that. And uh, we've done it right round to there. I'm going to take a look at the boot. Now, the boot's not quite as bad. Um, there's this crazing, but the paint is sound. It's not going anywhere. And I've had a, a good scratch just there, just to make sure. However, I have seen these uh, few blisters up here, which I think might be rust. So I'll be grinding a little bit deeper there. but. I think for now, if I just go over this with, uh, with a bit of um, 40 grit and I get all this off, that will um, start to get me down to a decent base. Like I say, this is not as bad as the roof, but um, definitely needs some attention. And of course, on the boot just here, we have this large crack. And there's been a lot of body work done in this section uh, because we took out the... Um, the recess for the number plate and the large light that went over the number plate to give it a smoother look. So what we'll be doing is probably 40 grit in this back and then covering this whole area in um, fiberglass. Because obviously at some point it's flexed, something like that, and that's led to that crack. So we'll be actually strengthening that part up. <coughs> So we've uh, sanded down this boot and there were a few uh, small problems. Um, up here as a thought, uh, there's a bit of corrosion. I've ground all that till it's shiny and then I did the same rust treatment as I have to the roof and around these uh, hinges as well, which are actually moulded in, you know. Working on a custom is never very good because everything's moulded in. So I can't really get those off without embarking on a massive job. So I've ground all that back to bright steel and uh, we've made all that good. And where the filler cap was removed as well, um, that had cracked. But what we're going to do is fibreglass over that so um, we won't have uh, any problems. Now you might be thinking, well, why am, I, why am I not welding a plate on over it? And the thing is, the minute you weld on steel, just the heat of the welder will change the, the sort of makeup of the steel and make it rust even quicker. Um, this is a car with some rust, um, 
and I'd rather not weld on there because it will the weld itself will start to rust and then that will lift the filler so I think now that's all nice and clean if we fiberglass over that that should be a lot better and the same with this section um, it's rusty but it's not it's not that bad and with the rust treatment and then I will also put a very thin layer of fiberglass over that and uh, it should help. A small crack in the body there and that is where the that is part of the modification so that's not down to rust but what we can do we can glass that and make that a lot stronger and also here I think it was simple flex in the bottom of the boot so we've ground it all back to the steel this is very lot of filler on this but this will be all filled with fiberglass to get it smooth. Um, I think a lot with anything that's custom where things are smoothed out and stuff there's always going to be a lot of filler. Even when you see on TV programs and they've done everything in steel, yeah it's all in steel and it all looks great, you never see how much filler goes over that car to make it really smooth and really straight and believe me don't matter how straight a car is it takes a lot to get cars super straight, particularly old cars. So that's the boot. As you can see it's got it's got ripples and all sorts in it so now we're going to DA all of that off and hope that that hides a hell of a lot of uh, you know rough bits but it's looking good already uh, I've sanded a bit and it's quite, it's going pretty good so let's get to it Here at the back, um, we always had this recess, but I've bought this lip out so it's it's flush and all the way across on both sides. And I've made this swoop a little bit lazier, and also the swoop sort of comes up, leaving this sort of triangle shape here. This still needs quite a bit of work, um, but as always, what I've done here. This has been sanded in 40 grit. Now, when I shape filler, anything like that, it's always just in 40 grit. I never touch the filler with anything else. Maybe a bit of 120 if I'm gonna feather some out, I don't know, but 95% of the time, just 40 grit. And then I've gone over this with four coats of high build primer. Now, what I'll do today is um, I'll flat all this back. You know, at first you can start with now, if it was really rough, you could go 120. But I'd always recommend that you go like a, a 320 at first, finish up with a 600, and then that'll be, you know, that's going to be super smooth. Uh, but yeah, with filler, just get it straight, just get the shape. Actually getting it, you know, like super smooth is not necessary because you've always got the high build prime. Treat this like another coat of filler that just goes over the whole thing. As I was prepping it, I came to the point where I did have two little bits that I wanted to do extra work on. So if we come and have a look at this. Just here, we had some flaking paint, but it turned out it was a little bit more serious. So quite a bit of body work's gone on there. And also I've snow plowed this part of the uh, window pillar and got rid of the rain gutter. Um, I've done this on both sides. And also I did some work on the back. Now. What I've done it, I've had to put some extra high build prime on, but the rest of the car is pretty much within like a hair's breadth of being ready to be actually painted. So what I did, I masked the entire car with this stuff, stuff called, um, what's it called? Top Gun, that's what it's called. Top Gun, it like sticks to the car with static. Um, and that protects the car. If ever you do any sort of spot repairs during your, um, you know, prep, always cover the whole car because a little bit of this dust will go on there and then you end up having to like scotch bright or whatever the whole car off to get those little speckles of paint. Anyway, we're done with that, so let's take this off. So then, this is it. This is uh, where we've got to with the, uh, the non-standard. Now, this paint wasn't too bad. 
But I thought, you know what, I'm doing the roof and I wanted to repaint the bonnet and the boot. And then there was a few bits around here. I thought, you know, I'm going to block the whole car down. So I've done this all with a hand sanding block and I've, uh, I've blocked it all down. So yeah, going around, the, going around the body and just feeling for any sort of imperfections because as good as you think you've got it, when you paint it, it'll look rubbish. You know, the, the tiniest of imperfections will show up, especially if you're going for a high gloss finish. Um, if you look at this roof, um, you know, I thought this was pretty good, but I've put just a thin skimmer stopper in there. But I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but this has been sanded so much, it's almost got a sheen to it. Um, I probably won't be going any further with, you know, getting that uh, sort of any smoother, because I do want the paint to keep to that. The roof is going to be a different colour. So what I'm going to do is, again with the top gun, I'm going to mask the windows, I'm going to mask the whole bottom of the car, and I'm going to get this part painted. And then what I'll do, once it's painted and it's all finished, it's going to be probably a four or five stage um, paint finish on this. What I'm going to do is leave this overnight, then mask the roof off, then I'll finish doing any tiny bits of prep on the bodywork and it really is pretty much wiped down. You know, there are a few little bits to do. Basically, it's a wipe down and de-dust. And then the day after that, I'll paint the bottom of the car. I'll clear coat the whole car as a whole. So where the paint finish joins, which will be around here, you know, that join is lost under the um, clear coat. Okay, that's it for this week, but join us next week. We're going to actually be putting some paint on, going to see what colours we're going to go with, and it's all going to be brilliant. So until then, click the subscribe button, press the bell icon for regular updates. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, and I'm sure there's something else I'm forgetting. But anyway, see you next week. It's going to be great.